Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting Blender tutorial. In this video, I want to show you how to work with physics in Blender. For that, I have meticulously stacked up these perfectly matched boxes. Well, as I said, in this tutorial, I really want to show you how to work with physics and rigid body dynamics in Blender. Now, this is going to be an intermediate tutorial, and I will assume that you are pretty comfortable with the basics of Blender. If you're new to it all, go and check out my full beginner tutorial series, as well as my Udemy training courses. I'm going to link you that down below. Also note that this is an absolute beginner tutorial in terms of physics in Blender, not in terms of Blender overall. But now, with all of my boxes well protected, let's jump up. Welcome to the exciting world of Blender. I have the latest version of Blender 2.8 here, which is from the 7th of May 2019. Just keep in mind that this is still a beta until it's officially released, so things might still change slightly. Let's click away the startup screen and just to make sure we're all on the same page, let's come into File, Load Factory Settings and let's select to load factory settings. First off, let's delete the cube in the center. So let's select it with left click because in Blender 2.8 left click is now the default. Personally, I'm a big fan of that change. I think it just opens up Blender to so many more people who found that right click select just a little bit odd. Plus you then now have a context menu on right click. So let's select the cube, press X and let's select to delete it. With our 3D cursor still in the center of the screen, let's press Shift and A. Let's come into adding a mesh. I'm going to add a plane. So there's our plane, press S to scale it up. And I'm actually going to type 10 on my keyboard to scale it up to exactly 10 meters by 10 meters. Then with the 3D cursor still at the center, Shift and A again to add another mesh. And this time I'm going to add a monkey or a Suzanne head into the scene. With the monkey selected, press G for grab, press Z to lock the movement to the Z axis. And let's just move the monkey head up to the top round about there. And to make sure that this looks nice and interesting, let's come to our render settings, make sure the render engine is set to Eevee, and then top right hand on the 3D viewport, I'm going to switch over to the rendered view. So this is going to give me a rendered preview. Right now, I only have this one light in the scene. So let's just add two other ones just to make this setup look a little bit nicer. So let's place the 3D cursor on the left side of our scene. And you can hold down shift and right click to move the 3D cursor in the latest version of Blender 2.8. Let's press Shift and A to add. I'm going to come in to add a light and I'm going to add an area light. Press S to scale it up quite large. G and then Z or Z on your keyboard. Let's move this light up. So there's our big area light. Let's press R to rotate it. I'm just going to spin it around so it kind of faces our monkey head. Let's rotate around and let's add another light down here on the bottom left again. Shift and right click to place the 3D cursor. Shift and A to add. Let's add another area light. G and Z to move it up, S to scale, and R to rotate. And again, let's just point that at our scene. By the way, if you feel that I'm going a little bit too quick with the shortcut keys, be sure to check out my Blender beginner tutorial series, which covers all of those basics. I'm going to link you that down in the video description. So check that out if you haven't seen it yet. I might also come into the light settings down here on the right hand side. Let's change the color a little bit. Maybe let's make this a little bit warmer. I'm also going to grab this point light right here grab it and just move it over to the side a little bit. And this one I might make a little bit cooler. So there's a bit of a contrast between the two color tones. And now let's just frame in our scene and let's press space to play this back. And absolutely nothing will happen. Let's press space again to stop playback. And by the way, shift and left arrow gets you back to the beginning of your animation in this particular version of Blender. Now let's add some physics into the scene. Let's select the monkey head down in the right hand side in the properties panel. Let's come into the physics tab. And now you can enable physics for different types of physics like fluids, soft bodies, cloth, collision, a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Smoke we've already done in another tutorial. This time I'm going to add a rigid body constraint to this object. So let's just enable that. Let's just leave all of the settings on default for now. And with our timeline indicator at the very beginning, let's press space to play this back. And our monkey head fell like a real world object, but it did also fall straight through the floor. 
Now in your timeline, you can actually see this dark brown arrow here that indicates that dynamics have been cached already. So this should play back nice and fast. Further down the line, you can see it's semi-transparent. So if you were to jump into any of those frames, it might be a bit slower because Blender still has to calculate those frames. Now, we obviously don't want the head to fall right through the floor. So let's come back to the beginning, shift and left arrow in Blender 2.8. Let's select the floor and in the physics tab, let's also add a rigid body constraint. This time I'm actually going to change the type of rigid body from active, which is what our monkey head is. So it's an active object that will be simulated and move around like a physically realistic object. On the ground, I want to change this type from active over to passive because I don't want the floor to fall. I just want the floor to stay and the monkey to kind of drop onto that. Now let's press space again and check this out. Cool. And our monkey head now falls onto the floor realistically. Let's come back. Let's reselect the monkey head. And in the physics tab, let's have a look at some of these settings. Now we've already talked about the type. The next most important setting is the mass, the actual weight of the object. Right now, this monkey head is one kilo in weight. You can jack up this mass to maybe around a hundred. And then if it interacts with other objects in your scene, it'll keep that mass in mind. So obviously a heavy object will push around lighter objects and objects that have the same mass will usually bounce off each other equally. Now there's two additional options here. Dynamic means that this object will actively participate in this physics simulation within this scene in Blender. Animated means that you've added keyframes to this object. So you can kind of toss objects or kind of control them partially and then let them go into the physics simulation and pick them back up and animate them further. We're not going to go into that too much. The next most important thing is probably under the collision. Right now the shape is set to convex hull and this refers to the actual collision shape. Now convex hull really just means that Blender will wrap a simplified mesh like a shrink wrap around this object and that is the object that is used for the purpose of the actual physics simulation. If you have objects with a lot of fine detail like maybe the ears of the monkey start intersecting other objects, you may want to change the shape from convex hull over to mesh so Blender will actually take the mesh itself of the object as the collision object but it does slow down your simulation so only do that if you really have to. Usually you're fine staying with convex hull or you can actually go even simpler. You can use a cone shape, a cylinder capsule sphere or a box shaped collision object and these ones will calculate quicker because they're mathematical primitives. They're much easier to compute than a convex hull but let's just leave this on convex hull for now. Then the source for this shape right now is set to deform meaning that if I was to scale this object up like animated to scale up or down or deform it with shape keys or other things the convex hull would update frame by frame. So the collision shape of this object would always match the shape of the actual object. I can also change this to base. So it'll actually just pick it up at the beginning of the simulation or to final. So I'll use the shape at the end of the simulation for the collision object. Then under surface responses, you will find very common physics properties like friction, which is how much an object slows down when it collides with another object and bounciness on how strong it bounces off another object. We'll play with these in just a moment. Let's pop open this sensitivity setting and under here you can give your object a margin. You can kind of puffer out this collision shape. Right now the convex hull would probably match pretty closely to this monkey head. Again, if you're finding that things are intersecting a bit because you have detailed objects, you can add a collision margin and increase this to essentially add an additional buffer of collision around the object and they won't intersect as much anymore. But obviously it might actually start looking a little bit less realistic. So use this at your own discretion. If you rewind and play this back again, we simply have the monkey head falling down onto the ground. Now let's start adding a few other objects into our scene. Let's rewind and you can simply select the monkey head and press shift and D, drag another copy down here, shift and D, shift and D. Let's come around, shift and D, shift and D. I'm just duplicating this monkey head and you can repeat this as often as you want to. And that actually looks kind of cool. Let's rewind and play this back. Cool, and we have a whole bunch of monkey heads just rolling around. Now let's rewind and do this a little bit differently. I'm going to select all of the monkey heads at the bottom and right now if, if I left click drag to select an area, which again another thing I really love about left click select, I'm actually also selecting all of these lights in the background. Let's just unselect everything up here top right. Let's pop this object type visibility panel open and I'm actually going to uncheck selectability for the lights. I don't want to be able to select the lights at all. So let's just again drag around these monkey heads here at the top. Cool, that looks good. X and let's delete 
those. Let's reset the 3D cursor to the center of our screen. You can either shift and right click kind of to get there or just shift and C to recenter the 3D cursor in the middle of your scene. Let's press shift and A and let's add again another Suzanne monkey hat. G to grab, Z to lock it to the Z axis, move this up a little bit. I'm also going to scale this down just a little bit. And let's use an array to duplicate to make like a grid of monkey hats that this big hat can then just crash into. First off, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's just right click the object and select to shade smooth. So we're getting a really nice smooth Suzanne hat here. Then on the right hand side, let's come into the modifiers panel and I want to add a modifier and the modifier I want to add is called array, which simply duplicates this object. So now we have two monkey heads. In the modifier settings, I can increase the count to add three, four, five, six, maybe six seems all right. Let's press G and X and let's just move this over kind of into the middle of our scene. That looks about right. And right now I can see that the objects are almost touching. I might want to give them just a little bit of space. So in the array modifier under relative offset, let's change this to 1.1 just so they're buffered out maybe just a little bit. Cool, that looks all right. Let's collapse this modifier and let's add another array modifier. Now I don't want to extend them further to the right. I actually want to build up a grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the relative X offset to zero. And now the relative Y offset, I'm going to set to 1.1 to create a copy right behind. Let's check this up to, well, maybe we'll go with five G and Y. Let's just move this forward a little bit. Cool. So we're kind of creating this grid of monkey heads. Maybe I'll move them down just a little bit as well. Let's again collapse this modifier and add another array. So we're creating a three dimensional array of monkeys. This time I'm going to set the relative X offset to zero and the relative Z offset to 1.1. So I'm going to create another row of monkeys right above that. Let's maybe set this to three. That should be plenty. I'm also going to grab this Suzanne hat at the very top. Let's just move this up a little bit more so it kind of can crash down right into that mass of monkey heads. Maybe I'll scale this up a little bit. Let's also come into the materials tab, add a new material, and I'm just going to give it a red color. So this is kind of our angry evil monkey hat that's going to smash through all of the other ones. Now, if I press space to play this back, well, nothing much happens because we haven't added physics to all of these duplicated monkey heads just yet. So let's come back. Let's reselect our whole array of monkeys. Let's come into the physics tab and add a rigid body constraint. I'm going to leave everything on default and do note that the mass of this object is set to one kilo, whereas our giant red monkey head is a hundred kilos. So this one is much heavier than all of these monkey heads. If I now play this back, hmm, it's, well, something's happening, but not really what we want. And that is because all of these monkey heads, this grid of monkey heads is actually, it's just one object. We're just using three array modifiers to create a grid, but it's still treated as a single object. What we really want to do is we really want to create a whole bunch of different Suzanne heads and each of them is its own rigid body. For that, we first need to apply these array modifiers to actually create these monkey heads for real, because right now they're really just virtual. They're just being generated by these modifiers. So let's apply every single one of these array modifiers. So now we actually have this ginormous mesh, but again, it is still a single object. So let's go into edit mode. For that, select the monkey grid, press tab to go into edit mode. You can press double A to unselect everything or A to select everything. And I want to make sure that I have everything selected and it doesn't really matter whether you're in vertex edge or face selection mode. Now I want to separate all of these objects because right now it's just one object. I actually want to separate them by the individual parts. In order to do that with everything selected, let's come up into the menu. Let's select mesh come into separate or you can also press P on your keyboard for that. And I want to select to separate by loose parts. Let's select this option. And this might take a little bit depending on the power of your computer, especially if you're dealing with Suzanne hats. It's just it's just a little bit slow. If this gets a bit too slow for you to follow along with Suzanne hats, you can also just create boxes or spheres instead and just kind of follow along. It's the same principle. You just won't have weird looking monkey heads rolling all over the place. Let's press tab again to go back into edit mode. And now each of these monkey heads is a separate object in my 3D scene. And in my outliner, I can see I've now generated all of these Suzanne heads. So now let's zoom out a little bit, rewind, and let's press space to play this back. Cool. 
it works, but it's behaving really weird. It's kind of like there's another an invisible force at work to kind of push them all over to the side and swish them back and something's going weird. So let's come back to the beginning. And the reason things have gone weird is that right now each of these monkey heads has an origin, but the origin for each of these heads is down here in the bottom. Can you see this orange point here? Only this monkey head here in this corner actually has the correct origin. For all of the other ones, it's incorrect because you would expect the origin for this monkey head to be right in the center of this monkey head. Now we can fix that up really easily. For that, let's make sure we select all of those monkey heads, then come up into the menu, select object, set origin, and I want to set the origin to geometry and keep an eye out on those monkey heads. And you can see each of them now has the origin right at the center of the head. So now if you come back out, rewind and play this back, Cool. That is looking kind of creepy, especially because their eyeballs pop out first and then it kind of ends up looking like a scene from Terminator with all of those skulls just lying around. But it's actually looking really cool. Let's rewind and let's say I wanted to change the physics on these monkey heads. Now, each of these monkey heads and actually each of those eyeballs individually as well in the physics tab has its own physics settings. And well, there will be a lot of objects to go through and adjust every single one. However, you can actually adjust it once and apply those physics to the entire group. For that, let's just select this monkey head down here in the corner. Let's come into the physics settings and let's make some changes. Maybe I want this monkey head to be a bit more bouncy. Maybe I want 0.4 bounciness and maybe just a little bit less friction. So they'll slide around a little bit more and they'll bounce a little bit more. Now I want to apply this set of physics settings to the entire rest. For that, what you need to do is select all of the objects that you want to apply the physics to. Then make sure that you select this monkey head at the very end. So you can see this bright outline, which indicates that this is my active object. All of the other ones are selected, but this is my active selected objects that we want to grab the physics settings from and apply to the rest. So with this adjusted monkey head as our active object, let's come up into object, rigid body, and now I want to select to copy from active and this is going to copy the physics settings from my current active object, which is this bright orange monkey head onto everything else I have selected. So object, rigid body, copy from active. And now if I select any of the other ones in the settings, you can see they've updated to exactly what I've set them to. So they're now a bit more bouncy and have a little bit less friction. Let's again rewind and play this back and let's just see what happens. Cool. Now, I'm not sure how obvious the change really was. Maybe I should have made a more dramatic change, but that's how you can easily tweak your physics settings and apply it to a whole lot of objects. Now, the very last thing I want to touch on, because physics can be quite expensive to calculate. Right now, you can see it's cached, so it should be nice and fast. But sometimes what you might want to do, you may want to adjust the animation of one of the objects after you've simulated your physics. Or maybe there's just one tiny thing going wrong with the simulation. You just need to manually tweak that a little bit. The easiest way to do that is actually to bake this entire animation into keyframes. So rather than relying on the physics system within Blender, you can actually bake the movement that gets calculated by this physics system into keyframes. And then you can adjust those keyframes, tweak them or do whatever you want with them. For that, let's rewind again. Let's reselect all of our monkey heads and their respective eyeballs. Let's come up into object, rigid body and select to bake to keyframes. Now I want to make sure that this covers my entire range from frame one to frame 250, which is my default setup for my scene. Let's hit OK. And again, this might take a little bit depending on the power of your computer. Even for me, this probably took around two to three minutes. And now that's done. Let's select one of those monkey heads or their eyeballs. And you may notice that it doesn't have a rigid body physics constraint applied to it anymore. However, if you make the timeline just a little bit bigger, you can now see that all of these objects that were previously animated by the physics system are now keyframed on every single frame. And if you play this back, all of these animations are now baked. They're now turned to keyframes. They're no longer rely on the physics system. And that means you can actually go in and tweak them. For example, if you think this head hasn't moved far enough, you can make adjustments or change things around. Plus it's a whole lot quicker. The only issue now obviously is I can't go back and change the physics for these objects anymore because they have no physics applied to them anymore. I've committed to baking this in. But now because all of those animations are baked in, I could pass them on to a different team or to a render farm or some other pipeline that I might need to, you know, 
turns into a really nice intro animation for some monkey terminator wasteland. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.